Um, one announcement that I want to make is uh, this last week we had um, one of our saints uh, pass away, go on to heaven, Marilyn Hayes, who's Ron Hayes' mom, and her service was here on Friday, and so uh, we want to just uh, say please keep this family in your prayers as, uh, you know, she is, uh, was ready to go to heaven, I know, but uh, it leaves, a, leaves definitely a space in their family, so keep them in your prayers. Also, we have a little one that was born in the last week and a half, and this so happens to be uh, our grandson. This is Zach and Marin's little boy. This is Wells Jeffrey Hill. Sort of sounds like my name. He has got a name after me, Wells Jeffrey. He was born a week ago Wednesday. And uh, so Zach, who's our middle school pastor, Pastor Zach and Marin, this is their uh, number two. And we're very proud. Very proud grandparents. Being a grandpa is awesome. Amen, let's go. <laughs> Very uh, glad to be able to be here with you today and see all of your faces here. We're, uh, we've been in a series this month, the month of November, uh, called Reclaim the Table. And I, just the feedback that I've heard from so many and just the responses that we've gotten in social media and just communications, uh, definitely something I think that has resonated with us and uh, we definitely uh, something that we need to take to heart and i believe it's life changing life transforming for us to change the pace of our life and reconnect with our family reconnect uh, with the lord and uh, so i want to do just as a way of just uh, kind of re recapping a little bit where we've been in case you missed one of these weeks uh, but it got kicked off at, on the first sunday of november with pastor weaver sharing about the family table and uh, family is uh, so important and uh, the re reality is, is that food is something that we all need. And we, uh, the family table is a place where we can share together mealtimes. It's, it's a built-in time to spend together as a family, connecting together and giving thanks to God. And I think we've lost some things over time. We've gotten busy, we've gotten distracted, and the family table doesn't happen quite like it used to. And we aren't as connected. So we have this challenge that we've been uh, giving out to you, and that's to, to reclaim the table, the family table. Pastor Austin followed that up with the community table. Again, because food is something that we all need, the perfect opportunity for us to reach out to friends, to neighbors, to co-workers, uh, is to bring them into our family table, which would make it a community table, where um, we connect and uh, impact and hope to make a difference on the people that are connected to us, that are around us in our life. So Pastor Austin challenged us uh, to follow through on this and use uh, the gift of hospitality and, and our homes and our, and our tables to invite in those people that we share life with and share around the table opportunity for us to love our neighbors and, uh, and hopefully be a blessing to them. Last Sunday, Pastor Hawkins shared about the Lord's table. It was around the table that uh, Jesus spent a lot of time and, and shared a lot of fellowship with people. And uh, scripture says that uh, he took a, a little bit of uh, uh, some negative comments because Jesus spent time with sinners around tables. It was around the table that Jesus spent time with his disciples, and uh, the Last Supper, he shared a meal with them that was intended for, uh, to be repeated for us to follow through with, and we'll do that periodically from time to time. Last week, we had communion together, and uh, Jesus said before he left, he said, do this. Uh, as often as you do this, re you remember me. It was uh, Jesus who said in Revelation 3.20, he said, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will share a meal with you together, which is really a conversation of, speaks of relationship, friendship, fellowship that Jesus wants to have with each one of us, his people. And so three things that we've asked you to do through this series. One is to uh, do your best to reclaim the table by eating together as a family. And we've challenged you to eat together as a family uh, at least three times uh, during the week. And so what we mean by that is we get together and we turn off the TV, we put down our, our devices, uh, and we just share time around the table where we can talk face-to-face, 
where we can share what's going on in our lives, where we can listen to one another. We have opportunity to talk about spiritual things, to encourage one another, to disciple and connect. And so uh, it's been fun uh, seeing pictures. We've, well, the second thing we've asked you to do is to, to take some pictures of your family gathered around the table and uh, p- post that on social media with the hashtag NH table. Many of you have done that and we have had an incredible response. So um, we want you to continue to do that this week. This is a big week. I know that it's a week where all of us, most all of us will spend some time with others around the table. This is a built-in feast week. Those of you that are on diets, I'm giving you the permission to go off your diet. It's not, it's not fasting, it's feasting this week. How, how many of you are okay with that? All right. We'll take care of dieting uh, after the 1st of January. But, um, but we want to encourage you to uh, continue to do that. If you get onto Facebook or Instagram and you just search the hashtag, if you just search NH Table, it will come up with uh, pages and pages of photos of, of our church family here sharing time around the table. It's very, very encouraging to see that happen. And I, just from some of the comments I've heard from some people, that's something that had kind of not been happening as much as, as it needed to. And I've heard some good comments uh, from families who've done that. And so each week we've given away a $100 gift card to hy V as uh, just a kind of an incentive for you to do that. And uh, this week we, we have a winner for the $100 gift card that is Tammy Schmidt. And I don't know if Tammy is here today. She is at a funeral. She, all right. It was her sister? Okay. Keep Tammy and her family in your prayers. And uh, so she uh, receives a $100 gift card. We'll do that one more week. And uh, so continue to post those pictures and encourage one another. Third thing that we've asked you to do is to pray before every meal. Pray before every meal. Give thanks for God's blessings and his provisions. And um, that's the subject of the message this morning. This week of Thanksgiving so appropriate, I believe, as we conclude this series with the Thanksgiving table. So uh, before I get into the message, I just want to make a, make a comment about this table that we have in front of us here. Uh, we had it sitting up here on the platform, and today we've kind of brought it down in the center. This, this table was donated to us by Josh Connis, and he is the owner of Iowa Barn Door and Mantle, which is located in Valley Junction on a railroad. And uh, Josh's wife um, is Caitlin, and Caitlin's grandparents, Ralph and Katie Lane, attend here. So I performed their wedding uh, a few years ago, and as we were preparing to um, do this series on reclaiming the table, I'm remembering that Josh has this business where he builds things, all out of, all of his stuff is out of reclaimed wood. And so I just happened to think, you know, I what, wonder what the possibility is that we could get a, something to use as a prop for this series, a table out of reclaimed wood. And so I uh, sent him a message, and uh, he got back to me, and he says, of all of all the things, you know, that I'm at, I stopped in the shop to see the only piece that he had in his shop was a table. And um, he said, you know, it's interesting that this week I'm just looking around my shop thinking, what am I going to do with this table? Because it's sitting there collecting dust. Uh, but this table that he, he made, uh, all custom made, is made out of uh, wood, reclaimed wood from uh, Fort Des Moines. So it's well over a hundred year old wood that he has put together into a table. He's welded and put all this together, and uh, he donated that to us. And we're, we're uh, just uh, wondering, what, what, what should we do with the table? We were going to give the table away, uh, but most of our uh, dining rooms would not fit a eight full eight-foot-long table. Uh, and uh, this thing is built, to, as my grandpa would, would have said, for a Sherman tank to drive over the top of it. It can be carried by two people, but I think Pastor Zach and Pastor Luke had to take two days of recovery after they carried it into the room. <laughs> so we want to honor the fact that uh, this is a, a very valuable table. He put a price tag on it of somewhere between three and $4,000. Um, so uh, our idea is that we want to we auction this table off, and we're going to do that by like a silent auction. And so we don't know how all the details of that is going to work, but we're going to do that through uh, email, social media. So this week, uh, we're going to be sending something out probably by Tuesday, kind of giving details about that. So if you're interested in it or you know somebody who might be interested in it, uh, it it's going to be it's going to be up for auction. So pay attention to social media. Watch your email. If you don't if you're not on our email list, uh, just just 
let us know. Get your, get your email to us, just sending it in to info at newhope.church. Let us know you want to be on that. All of our uh, announcements are sent out on Friday, and uh, we've got an announcement page on our website that you can get to anytime to know what's going on. But that's the, that's the plan for this table, and I just wanted to give uh, a shout out to Josh for his generosity in doing that, and he and his wife, Caitlin, and uh, recognize them and say, if you're ever in, uh, interested in finding something like this or some other type of uh, uh, product, look, get on to uh, the internet. It's Iowa Barn Door and Mantle on their Facebook page or on their, on their website, and um, he, he puts together some incredible things. So, all right, yes. The proceeds, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Brett. So uh, our idea is for that to go to um, Hope Ministries here in town who does a lot of good things, helping families who are in need, helping individuals who may be homeless. They do a lot of feeding, and so we just thought it would be an appropriate thing. We already support them, and we want to just be able to bless them with the proceeds of this. So that's the whole idea of what we're doing, and uh, we want it to be a blessing, and for that blessing just to keep on giving. So um, that, thank you, Pastor Brett, for uh, bringing that up. It's not in my notes here, but now it's made it there. All right, where am I at? We're on the uh, Thanksgiving table. All right, second page. (laughs) We've had a lot of announcements, a lot of things to get in here today. Videos, announcements, all kinds of stuff. A A grandson being shown off and I gotta recapture my composure here. The Thanksgiving table. So we're asking everyone to, to, to take time to give thanks as we gather around the table, as we reclaim the table, and, and not just for the series that we're doing. Okay, we may not be taking pictures and hashtagging for time to come, but we hope that this is something that you would continue to do, that we built in some, some good routines and some good habits where we're connecting around the table and where we would pray before every meal. I'm not sure if that's your practice. I'm not sure if together as a family or you as an individual, that every time you sit down for a meal, that you take time to give thanks to the Lord. Why, why is it that we pray at the table? Here's the interesting thing. If you look in Scripture, there is not a command anywhere that says you ought to pray for your food before you eat. There is not a directive that says um, that you ought to pray over your meals. It's not a command in the Bible for that, but in areas where the Bible doesn't speak directly to that, let's back up a little bit and, and see if there's some principles or practices that we can, that we can look to. Specifically, what, what did Jesus do? That's a good question for us to ask. I don't know if you've ever asked the question, maybe you're faced with a, you know, just some kind of a choice or a decision, and you're not quite sure what to do. Just ask yourself, what, what would the Lord do here? What would Jesus do? And so we ask this question, what did Jesus do? Well, if you look in Matthew chapter 15, you'll see Jesus is feeding a multitude of people. Specifically, there's 4,000 men plus women and children. And so they're going to feed this multitude of people. And you kind of know the story. They, they gathered up what they could find. And uh, total, there was uh, seven loaves and two fish. And uh, what does Jesus do when he gathers that up before he begins to disperse it among the people? Matthew 15, 36 says, then he, Jesus, took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had, what he had done? He'd given thanks. When he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. Also, Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, Jesus is at the table with his disciples. It's the Last Supper, and it says that Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. And so it's something that Jesus practiced. We also have an example of of the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 27. Uh, In this particular scenario, we find Paul on a ship, and he's a prisoner on a ship. And uh, it says that they've been in a storm several days. They have been fighting with hurricane force winds out in the ship. And uh, Acts chapter 27, verse 33, uh, it says, Just before dawn, Paul urged them to all eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food and you haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair on his head. See, Paul had been uh, kind of visited by an angel who said, uh, absolutely, you will all survive this. But 14 days of battle in a storm and they hadn't eaten at all. And Paul said, look, we got to eat. 
I'm not sure how this is going to happen. I know, I'm, I'm certain it's got a good outcome, but we need to eat. And verse 35 said, after he said this, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God in front of them all. And then he broke it and began to eat. So he, he gave thanks to God in front of all of them. It wasn't just a quiet, silent little prayer that he prayed. He gave thanks in front of all of them. And what he's doing is he's, he's telling them of, of God's goodness and that they would all be okay. But then he prays. Then he gives thanks. So we've got a practice of Jesus praying. We've got a practice of, of Paul praying before food and giving thanks. And we realize that the principle of prayer and the principle of thanksgiving is found throughout Scripture. And in a week where we celebrate as a national holiday a day of thanksgiving, very appropriate that we, that we stop, take time, and think, think this through. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18 says, Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. He says, always be joyful, never stop praying. We need to pray continually and be thankful in all circumstances. Are we the kind of people who give thanks in everything? You see, we have this principle of, of stopping and thanking. Jesus, Jesus did this, Paul did this, and throughout Scripture we have the command to thank God, to say thank you for all that you've done, for, for your purposes, for your plans, for your uh, peace that you give us. But because of all this, as we uh, reclaim the table, we slow down, we stop what we're doing, and say thank you to God. We're, we want to do that for every single meal. Simply taking every meal as an opportunity to give thanks, to be thankful and to pray. So just like we all need food, you know, there's this time where we gather around the table and eat, and it's a good opportunity for us to connect. And throughout our day, as we stop and we, and we take, take on physical sustenance, because our bodies need that, we can't live without food. We need food. And so every time that we eat, it's an opportunity for us, just a built-in opportunity for us to say thanks to God. So how is it that we, how do we pray at meals? How do, I don't know how you pray at your meals. Do you, do you hold hands? There's nothing wrong with that. Some families do that. Some people, some people uh, fold their hands like this. And it doesn't really matter what we do as long as we're taking time, as long as we're taking time to pray. But I think prayer needs to be the first thing that we do at a meal. Before we dig in and start eating, we, we should stop, take time, and pray. And that's, that's the rule at our house that um, we, before we have a meal together as a family, we all are at the table and we'll wait at the table till everybody's there. And uh, once everybody's there, then, then we pray and then it's time to eat. So as our kids were growing up, we taught them, and maybe I'm sure most all of us have done this with our children, we've taught them prayers to pray uh, so they can participate in this too. And we've taught them little prayers that they can memorize, right? God is great, God is good, now we thank him for the food. I mean, food and good don't rhyme. I always wondered as a kid why, th why that food, I don't know. But we give, we, we've, we've done that, and it's a good thing to do because we're teaching our kids to be thankful and they can participate in this. But at some point as our kids have grown up, we, uh, around upper elementary, middle school age, you know, we've, we encourage them to begin to start um, saying prayers on their own from their heart. And it might be a very, very simple prayer. But what happens sometimes, and I think we, we get into this pattern, we, we memorize things and we're guilty of saying them and not really thinking about what we say. So, you know, we can, we can rattle through a prayer that's just kind of more like this is, uh, you know, it's the routine, it's what we do, but we don't stop and think about what we're, what we're saying. So if we're set down at the table and, uh, and we're saying God is great, God is good, really what we're saying is it's almost like saying, ladies and gentlemen, start your engine, we're getting ready to eat, right? We're not really thinking about is, you know, is God great, is God good? Are we really thanking him for our food? So it's good for us to stop and to begin to pray or teach our kids how to pray uh, from their heart. And so what that does is it sets the conversation, uh, the course of the conversation for the meal. So Pastor Austin, when he was talking uh, a couple of weeks ago about the community table, uh, just gave a couple of suggestions as, as he challenged us to invite people into our home. 
that uh, may, may not be followers of Jesus. They might just be a neighbor, a coworker. Uh, and and how, do we, how do we do this thing? Because we, we pray before we, we eat our meal. We don't want to seem super religious or we don't want to act like, you know, this has been a plan and we're trying to just get them in here so we can get them saved. Uh, of course, you know, we've, we've got the, the, the truth, the, the message, the hope, the love of Jesus, and we want everybody to know that. But how do we, how do we uh, cross that bridge? And he gave us a couple of questions. One being, you know, we, is there anything that I can pray with you about as we bless the food? That's just something we do. We're Christians. We do that. So uh, it, it sets the conversation, the course of the conversation for the meal. So we could, we could pray a lot of things. Uh, in your prayer, uh, at, at, you, can, you can pray about some kind of virtue, like um, God's, God's peace and his presence. You could pray about... Um, uh, Thanking God for his grace. There's going to be a lot of family dinners this week as we gather for Thanksgiving. And if it's in your home or maybe just in your family because your family knows that you're a Christian, that you'll go to church, maybe you're asked to pray. And you pray a prayer from your heart. And you just pray and ask and thank God for what he's done. God, thank you for the faith that you've given us to trust you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for all that you've given to us. Thank you, God, for your great grace. And, you know, who knows if that might just bring up something in a conversation. What is grace? What's so amazing about grace? It's an opportunity for you to talk about that. You could show honor in your prayer. Most likely you're getting together with family. There might be grandmas or, or grandpas, grandparents sitting around the, the table with you. And you take opportunity in your prayer just to say thank you that grandma and grandpa could be here with us today. Thank you, God, for honoring their life, for their years together, uh, for, for grandma or grandpa that's here with us today, for what you've done in their life and, and um, the legacy that they leave to all the rest of us. And so it could steer that conversation to, uh, for one of our, our, our children to say, Grandma and Grandpa, how long have you been married? Tell us stories about the old days. And then uh, we know that the conversation, it, we've got a, a, a good amount of material to go uh, for quite a while at the table. I love hearing stories about what happened uh, in, in, my, uh, in my grandparents' days. It's just a way that we can reclaim the table for thank, thankfulness, to take time to pray. So I started by asking the question, why, why do we pray at the table? Why do we thank God for our food? Why do we stop to say thanks when we eat a meal? And the answer to that question is because God is so good. And that's not just a kid's prayer. God is good. He's been good to us. We've been given something special by God. And for us not to express our appreciation to him for his blessings would be tragic. So let's just look at a few scriptures. Psalm 136, 1. And this particular verse is repeated several times. Psalm 106, 1, 107, 1, 118, 1 says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Ephesians 5, 20, Paul says, Give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to, to him for everything. Philippians 4, 6, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. I spoke Wednesday night in, in youth group and we talked about worry and anxiety and, and uh, what the answer to that is really having a, a heart of thankfulness. When he says don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything, it should be an opportunity. When we start to worry to say, you know what, I need to just give that to God. Because when we worry, what do we do? We don't, we don't do anything for ourselves. We don't add a day to our life. We don't add an inch to our height. It does nothing for us. Worry is like a rocking chair. It gives us something to do, but we don't go anywhere. So scripture says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. It's an opportunity for us to take it to God. And what I challenge the students to do, to, maybe to list the things that you're afraid of, things that you worry about, the things that you have anxiety about. And on the other side is to write the things that you have to be thankful for. And I think if we would just take uh, time ourselves to do those types of things, maybe start a prayer journal and begin to just start listing the things that you have to be thankful for. Because I think as, as, as humans, as Americans especially, we, are, we, are, we fall short in the thank, Thanksgiving part of it. 
we don't express thankfulness very well. And so to challenge ourselves to, to give thanks. Colossians 4, 2, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Psalm 100, verse 4 and 5, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So we see this throughout scripture of the, the, the the words that God is good and his love endures forever. Psalm 23, six, surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live or dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness, God's goodness and his mercy, his love will, will follow me. Actually, the better term would be they pursue me. They pursue me, not just some days, but all the days of my life, the psalmist says. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm trying to remember my days here, Saturday, every day his love and his mercy, his goodness, they pursue us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're to praise his name. Psalm 103, verses one to five, Pastor Brett read them earlier in the service, he had no idea that I was using this in my my message today, Uh, but this is what it says in in a little bit different version that he read, the New Living Translation. Let all that I am praise the Lord, with my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. NIV says, never forget his benefits. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. We're exhorted in this this psalm to praise the Lord, to give thanks to God himself. See, we have so much, so much that we need to give thanks and praise to the Lord. What do you have to be thankful for today? We need to not forget that he has done so many good things. We need to take time to stop and to pray. And a mealtime is a great time to pray because we do that many times throughout the day. It just builds into time for us to say, Let me just stop for a moment, recognize and realize that I have much to be thankful for and give God thanks. So don't forget the good things that he's done. Don't forget his benefits. We are forgetful people. I am a forgetful person. It frustrates me that I forget so many things. But the psalmist says, don't forget his benefits. Don't forget good things that he's done in our lives. He goes on to tell us that we're to be thankful for, and he lists five things. Be thankful for the forgiveness that we have in Christ. Verse three says, he forgives all my sins. You have been forgiven. You've been forgiven through what Christ has done on a cross. That's enough to give him thanks for the rest of your days. If you've accepted Christ and he's forgiven you of your sins, that's an amazing gift. Eternal life forever with him. Be thankful not only for forgiveness in Christ, but be thankful for good health. It says that he heals all my diseases. All my diseases. We should never take our health for granted. When we are sick, God is our healer. Number three, be thankful for God redeeming us from the pit of death and destruction. Isaiah 53 says that we all, like sheep, have gone astray. We are prone to wander, and we can get ourselves in some big issues and big trouble. But John 10 says that Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd of the sheep, that he cares for each one individually, and he knows everyone by name. And the good shepherd, it says, lays his life down for his sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. Number four, be thankful for God's love and his mercies. It says, you crown me with tender love and mercies. God's mercies are great. He doesn't give us what we deserve. 
gives us grace that's unmerited, undeserved. The Bible says if we read in, uh, on in chapter 103 of Psalm, Psalm 103 verse eight, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are, and he remembers that we are only dust. And the fifth thing that he talks about is to be thankful for his provision. He fills my life with good things. God's provided for us all that we need. Food, shelter, clothing, jobs, abilities. Here's the thing, we don't give thanks enough. And I think what happens sometimes is we get so comfortable with this and we start thinking that we're responsible for all of this. I'm the one who did this. The reality is we've, we've got nothing apart from God. Psalm 23, 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I have everything that I need and he is the provider of everything that we have. I want you to know that we are, we are blessed beyond measure. And this is something that we say and uh, you, you hear that and you go, I, absolutely, we're blessed beyond measure. We live in a very prosperous part of the world and most of us, have never known scarcity of food. There may be some people in the room who have experienced going without days for food because there was no food. But most of us don't even begin to understand that. So even to ask the question, if we're gonna ask the question, why, would, why do we give thanks before every meal? Or, or to stop and think, if we don't give thanks before every meal, that we lack the awe of God's provision in our life because we have such an abundance. We have an abundance in our lives as Americans. So to assume that there will always be way more food available than we need is a luxury that most of the world has never understood. Complaining about the food that we have is a luxury that hundreds of millions of people don't know. So just yesterday when we had dinner together and last night we had leftovers. I'm gonna pick on Eli, my son, who said, no, not leftovers. I don't, I don't like that. But are we all guilty? We have cupboards that are full of food and yet we don't know what to eat. We have closets that are filled with clothes Maybe that we haven't worn for 20 years, but they're still in our closet, and we can walk into a, a walk-in closet and say, I got nothing to wear. <laughs> and most of us live in homes that are mansions. That somebody from another country in this world would walk into your home and think, you live in a mansion. It's amazing the perspective of been uh, many times out of the country to third world countries and it's always interesting the comments of people who are there and experience it to say these people have almost nothing and yet they're so happy. Why is that? These, these are the kind of people that, that pray for food to be on the table because there is none on the shelf. How are we gonna get food just for today? As I think of the video of the family getting up before the sun is up, gathering the containers and walking who knows how many miles and who knows what types of things that they have to battle against, wild animals, thieves, robbers, to take those couple of containers and go and get some dirty water out of a river so that they can take it back home and have something at home to drink. And I think, I can get up in the night and go to my faucet and turn water on, it's right there, clean drinking water. We have been blessed with an abundance. And I think it's the dark side of, of blessing is that we have so much that we don't even give thanks for it. 
I'm not trying to be critical this morning, but you know, as I think of these things, that God forgives all my sins, do we stop and realize that? That I've been forgiven all my sin by what Christ has done on the cross, that he heals all my diseases. So the reality is, is that there are a lot of people who are battling disease. A lot of people are struggling with sickness. There are people here today who are very, very sick. Or maybe you've got a family member that's very sick. And, and you know, it's, it's just like the enemy to come into our mind and into our heart and say, how is it, how is it that that person over there could be so blessed and here I'm trying to do everything right and I'm struggling with this? It's so easy for us to get our eyes off of the one who is the giver of these gifts and get it onto our circumstances. And rather than giving thanks to him, we want to shake a fist. He redeems us from the pit. Times we get ourselves stuck in some situations. God is so faithful to pick us up. He crowns us with love. There are people here today who need to know and experience God's amazing love. And you feel like there's no way that he could, should, would ever love you. And you need to experience his love today. And I would say that most all of us in the room need to be more thankful. Shouldn't feel bad for the fact that we have things. But there's a dark side of that that causes us to be self-sufficient. The fact that we don't lean on, we don't rely on, and we don't come back and give God thanks. He fills my life with good things. This morning, one of those things may, might connect with you with the five things that the psalmist said, here's, here's what we ought to give thanks for, that he forgives all my sins, he heals all my diseases, he redeems my life from the pit, he crowns me with love and tender mercies, and he fills my life with good things. And today, he's speaking something into your heart. Today, you might be saying, I need his forgiveness. He'll forgive all my sins. You've never invited Christ into your life. You've never asked him to forgive you of your sins. I'm gonna tell you that is one of the most freeing, life-giving experiences when you truly offer your life to Jesus. I'm gonna ask you to bow your heads with me this morning. If today you need to invite Jesus into your life and you need to ask him to forgive you of your sins, with nobody looking around and every eyes closed, every head's bowed. And today you would say, Pastor Jeff, that's me. Today I want to offer my life. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to invite him into my life to forgive me of my sin. And across the room today, you realize that he paid a great price for you. You can go on living your life the way you're doing it, but it's not really going to get you where, where you really want to go. But Jesus has already made a way for you. If that's you today and you would reach out and say, Pastor Jeff, I want Jesus to forgive me of my sins, to save me, just raise your hand and keep it raised. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Would you just join me in just praying this prayer? Jesus, thank you for what you've done for me. Jesus, you died on the cross. You gave your life for me. You shed your blood so that I could be forgiven. Thank you, God, for life that you've given and the life that you will continue to stand with us and guide us and lead us, forgive us. Thank you for the hope of eternal life. Lord, I pray for every person in the room who is praying that prayer today, inviting you into their life raised a hand and said, I need Jesus. I need his forgiveness. Thank you for that life in Jesus' name. I want to ask you to stand this morning. We're going to end by just singing a song. It's got a simple chorus that just says, thank you, Jesus. And I know that there's some needs here in this place where there's some of you, when the scripture says he heals all of my diseases, you're saying, you know what, I'm sick. I'm battling sickness, I'm battling disease. 
you need prayer today, we want to invite you to come. You may feel stuck in a pit. He wants to lift you up. If that's you this morning, you feel like the wheels are just turning and you're getting nowhere, I want to invite you to come for prayer. You need to know and experience God's love in a real, genuine, sincere way. I invite you to come and reach, reach out to him. And today, if you just are saying, I need to be more thankful, I'm going to make it a point to give thanks. Whether it's a writing in a prayer journal, you take time every day, mealtime or whatever it is, to give thanks. If you're making a commitment to do that today, I'd just invite you to come. But if you need prayer this morning for anything, there'll be people who come and pray with you. But let's just come and offer our lives and just say, God, thank you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your forgiveness. God, we thank you. You are the giver of everything that we need. Jesus, we thank you that you have given us life. You've given us hope. Everything that we have need of, you're the great provider, supplier of all that we have need of. Today, God, we want to remember and give thanks. And not just today and not just this week of Thanksgiving and not just on a day of Thanksgiving, but every day is a day of Thanksgiving because we've been blessed by you abundantly. May our hearts continually be turned to you with gratitude and thanksgiving for your great love for us, for your goodness to us. May we be a people who are marked and characterized by gratitude and thankfulness. May our eyes and our hearts, God, be fixed on you, not on our problems, not on our circumstances, but even as Paul in a boat in a ship that was tossed and in, 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 in trouble in, in the water. Sometimes our life feels like that, but we've got this peace, God, that you are with us and that you have good things for us. Pray for those who are sick, God, that you'd bring healing. Pray for those, God, who are facing desperate situations that you would make a way. God, our trust is in you, and we will forever give you thanks. In the times when we feel like we're discouraged or down and wondering where you are, God, that it would just turn us to expressing thankfulness to you for the fact that, God, you will work things together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. So despite what our eyes see, God, we will trust and be thankful for your goodness to us, your loving kindness, your faithfulness, Jesus. Mark us as people who are thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. May this be a focus for us that we would be known as people who give thanks. Always giving God glory, always giving Him praise for His goodness to us.